So the more that time passes, the more that I become convinced that none of this is real. It's either a giant simulation that we're all part of, or this is nothing more than a fever dream. So let me try to explain the situation that unfolded over the weekend surrounding multiple presidential candidates. So rapper and 2024 presidential candidate Kanye West met with former president and current 2024 presidential candidate Donald Trump, who also happens to be a reality television show star, and he brought with him to said meeting a Nazi. So now there's a spat between these two individuals. And on top of that, Kanye West is calling out Ben Shapiro for being biased against Kanye West by taking money from Ron DeSantis and then giving preferable coverage to Ron DeSantis, an opponent to Kanye West, hence the uh, biased coverage. And on top of that, Ye is also attacking Elon Musk, now owner of Twitter, also the richest man on the planet, for not unbanning Alex Jones, who defamed the families of victims of the Sandy Hook massacre. All of this unfolded in the course of one weekend, and it just feels like we're watching the movie Idiocracy, but a real-life version of it, like we're seeing a play of Idiocracy unfold. So let's get to the specifics here. Kanye West brought a Nazi to meet with Donald Trump, and this is how he said the meeting went. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, I think that was like lower on the list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. When he didn't know where the lawyers is, you'll still have your lawyer list. And when all the lawyers said, forget it, Trump's done, there were loyalists running up yep. in the White House, right? And my question would be, why, when you had the chance, did you not free the January Sixers? And I came to him as someone who loves Trump, and I said, go and get Corey back. Go and get these people that the media tried to cancel and told you to step away from. He basically gives me this would-be mob-esque kind of story talking to some kid from the south side of Chicago trying to sound mobby or whatever. He goes into the story about all that he went through to get Alice Johnson out of jail and how he didn't do it for Kim, but he did it for me. But then he goes on to say that Kim is a and you can tell her I said that. And I was thinking like, that's the mother of my children. Since we know, and all the Christians in America that love Trump know that Trump is a conservative, we're going to demand that you hold all policies directly to the Bible. When Trump started basically screaming at me at the table telling me I was going to lose, I mean, has that ever worked for anyone in history? <laughs> You're going to lose. Tell him he's going to lose. lose. Tell I'm like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Trump. You're talking to Ye. Just FYI, that video has since been deleted, but Kanye West said multiple things there that made me scratch my head. He referred to Nick Fuentes as intelligence, saying, I walked in with intelligence. He claimed that Trump was really impressed with Nick Fuentes, a Holocaust-denying Nazi. And on top of that, he made a little bit of a demand to Donald Trump, saying that we're going to demand that you hold all policies directly to the Bible. That's going to come into the equation later, because that is something that uh, Kanye West, along with his Nazi friends, are trying to encourage. Now, if you're curious about what took place during the meeting, well, it seems like Kanye West's retelling of the event wasn't that far off. As Axios explains, behind the scenes, a source familiar with the dinner conversation told Axios that Trump seemed very taken with Fuentes, impressed that the 24-year-old was able to rattle off statistics and recall speeches dating back to his 2016 campaign. Paraphrasing the conversation, the source said Fuentes told told the president he preferred him to be authentic and that Trump seemed scripted and unlike himself during his recent 2024 campaign announcement speech. Trump responded, you like it better when I just speak off the cuff, the source said. Fuentes replied that he did, calling Trump an amazing president when he was unrestrained. There was a lot of fawning back and forth, the source added. Fuentes told Trump that he represented a side of Trump's base that was disappointed with his newly cautious approach, especially with what some far-right activists view as 
as a lack of support for those charged in the January 6th Capitol attack. Trump at one point turned to Ye and said, I really like this guy. He gets me, according to the source, of course, referring to Nick Fuentes, the Nazi. Now, as NBC News reports, fucking nightmare. Trump team does damage control after he dines with Ye and white supremacist Nick Fuentes. The former president's campaign claims he didn't know anything about Fuentes, who joined the rapper under fire for his anti-Semitic remarks. Now, it does seem that sources close to Trump are corroborating this claim that Trump didn't know who Nick Fuentes was. The problem is that you certainly knew who Kanye West was. And I know that as terminally online Donald Trump is, he maybe heard something about the anti-Semitic tirade that Kanye West recently went on. So I maybe can understand, okay, you didn't know that Kanye West would bring a Nazi, but you knew that Kanye West was saying very disturbing anti-Semitic things, but yet you still agreed to a meeting. So, I mean, still kind of uh, bad on your part, but he tried to downplay this on Truth Social, going into full damage control mode, saying, so I help a seriously troubled man who just happens to be black. Yay, Kanye West, who has been decimated in his business and virtually everything else, and who has always been good to me by allowing his request for a meeting at Mar-a-Lago alone so that I can give him very much needed advice. He shows up with three people, two of which I didn't know, the other a political person who I haven't seen in years. I told him don't run for office, a total waste of time, can't win, fake news went crazy. So, Trump, the reason why fake news went crazy is because you literally had dinner with a Nazi, an actual Nazi who called for a dictatorship, who's a Holocaust denier. So that's no small thing, considering you are currently the front runner to be the Republican Party's nomination for the president of the United States in 2024. So, yeah, this is why they're going crazy. But as you can hear from the tone of that tweet or see from the tone of his tweet rather he's going into damage control mode and i think that this is hilarious because i think that donald trump was expecting kanye west to pay fealty to him but instead kanye west came with a different agenda to try to influence trump presumably to be more evangelical in his political orientation and on top of that he asked trump if he would be his running mate so kanye west did not kiss trump's ring Contrarily, he was there to challenge Donald Trump, presumably. But still, it's a bad look that you had dinner with a Nazi. That stink will never leave you. And Ben Shapiro took to Twitter to condemn Donald Trump, saying, A good way not to accidentally dine with a vile racist and anti-Semite you don't know is not to dine with a vile racist and anti-Semite you do know. Now, to that point, I agree with Ben Shapiro. The problem is that this is the pot calling the kettle black. Because look at the company that Ben Shapiro himself keeps. He has platformed Matt Walsh, a self-described theocratic fascist. So perhaps you should also look at the company that you keep, Ben Shapiro. But Kanye West saw that and he decided to respond to Ben Shapiro, which is where the shit show really begins. Ye shared this Media Matters article, which reads, Ron DeSantis paid over $100,000 to Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire. And he responded by saying, Shapiro starvingly accepts $100,000 from one of my opponents, then tries to trash me. He's pretending like he's a viable candidate. I love this. Ben Shapiro responded saying, sadly, you've trashed yourself. You didn't need my help. It wasn't me. It wasn't the Jews. It was just you. Now, finally, Ye tweeted this before deleting it. As much as Ben and I disagree, I pray he joins me in saving our country. You know what they say, love your enema. I mean, uh, spelling's not my core competency when I'm sleepy. If Nick keeps tweeting from my account, the only platform I'll have left is Truth Social. Now, shortly after Kanye West made that tweet, he deleted it along with any other references to Nick Fuentes on his Twitter page. Uh, but I don't know what he's trying to say. I, I think it's evident that that entire tweet is incoherent. But if I had to search for grains of substance, and I use the word substance very charitably here, I think that he's low-key trying to make an anti-Semitic jab at Ben Shapiro. Because if you remember his tweet where he said he would go to Death Con 3 on the Jews, he also said he's sleepy right now, but when he wakes up, He'll go to Death Con 3 on the Jews. So by him saying, I'm sleepy, perhaps that's a reference to his old tweet and him attacking Ben Shapiro, knowing that Ben Shapiro is Jewish and him being an anti-Semite saying, you know, I'm going to go to Death Con 3 on Ben Shapiro. 
But moving on from the Ben Shapiro, Kanye West spat. So Milo went on Gab to explain that what Kanye West was trying to accomplish was indeed to push Donald Trump to the right and make him more evangelical. Imagine thinking that Donald Trump isn't far enough to the right. Like, you've got to be completely out of your mind. But nonetheless, this is what he wrote on Gab. Nick and Ye didn't discredit Trump's 2024 campaign with that dinner meeting. Trump did that himself by having the most boring low energy announcement speech in history. He did it by continuing to suck the boots of the Jewish powers that be who hate Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Hate our country and see us all as disposable cattle according to their holy book. Trump will start putting Jesus Christ first in his campaign messaging, or he will be left in the dust of someone who does. It's that simple. We're done putting Jewish interests first. He's just saying it. It's time we put Jesus Christ first again in this country. Nothing and no one is going to get in our way to make that happen. I just want to remind you that this is someone who Kanye West is relying on to help run his 2024 campaign. And there are still people who claim that Kanye West said nothing wrong. He wasn't anti-Semitic. And yet he's aligning with people who are like, oh, yeah, we're done putting Jewish interests first. I mean, could they be any more explicit if they tried? Now, Nick Fuentes also seemingly has turned on Donald Trump following the meeting between the two of them where Trump was reportedly impressed with Fuentes saying Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene are being used as bait to lure the base back into supporting people like Kevin McCarthy, Ronna McDaniel and Rick Grinnell. I didn't leave the MAGA movement. The MAGA movement left me. What are Christian Americans going to get out of a McCarthy speakership or new Trump White House? Lower gas prices reduce the corporate tax rate. So the subtext is that Donald Trump is not in any way furthering this America first movement to move the U.S. closer to a white ethno state. Now, I don't know if Kanye West knows that that's what Nick Fuentes wants. Either way, there's enough evidence out there that Nick Fuentes is a straight up Nazi, that Kanye West maybe should have done his due diligence before meeting with him and taking him to meet with the former president. Either way, Nick Fuentes is basically saying that all of these people, the rhinos, including Rick Grinnell, who's a gay man, by the way, just supporting Trump, you're effectively supporting them. So you're not going to get the white ethno state that you wanted. You're not going to get a theocracy that you wanted by simply supporting Donald Trump again. Hence why they're kind of moving on to Kanye West, because Kanye West is the individual who is presumably going to enact a theocracy, at least according to his agenda and what he wants. I mean, constitutionally, that's not going to fly, but that's not going to stop Kanye West from trying to do that. Uh, again, like I I'm talking about Kanye West and all of these people as if they're functioning adults, but all of them have massive, massive mental illness issues. And I think that re religion alone is extremely destructive. But when a mentally ill person is going to subscribe to a religion, the danger just gets amplified. And so all of these people who I'm talking about here, like I'm trying to ascribe more coherency to their statements, but all of them aren't really making that much sense. All of these people are mentally ill. And I'm not saying that to be insulting or, or make a malicious statement. I'm saying that they have untreated mental illness and they need help, but they're not getting their, that help. So, you know, here they are influencing these headlines and potentially burning the MAGA movement to the ground, which I'm okay with. But at the same time, these people are normalizing hate and that's extremely bad. Now, Ye also turned his ire towards Elon Musk, who is the owner of Twitter and friend of Kanye West, who recently unbanned Kanye West after his anti-Semitic tirade. And he called out Elon Musk for refusing to unban Alex Jones. And the reason that he gives as to why Alex Jones hasn't been unbanned or should be unbanned is um, pretty on par for Kanye West. Another issue I have is the fact that Elon won't reinstate Alex Jones. Yeah, I agree. Alex Jones is a Christian, mm. but you have a person who doesn't believe that Christ is Lord going to buy an American media outlet right. and picking and choosing who can be on the platform and who can't be on the platform. Right. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. So Alex Jones, who defamed the families of Sandy Hook victims, should be unbanned because he is a Christian. Now, what I love is that in that rant there against Elon Musk, there was an inherent criticism of capitalism there where um, Kanye West didn't like how... Uh, an American media outlet was bought and you have basically one billionaire picking and choosing 
who can and can't be on the platform. Yeah, that's what we call capitalism and why we shouldn't allow oligarchs to pretend as if they are the arbiters of free speech, because we all know now that that is a load of horseshit. So either way, this is a really fascinating story because I like what I'm seeing in the sense that Kanye West is taking a blowtorch to the MAGA movement, and he is quite literally fomenting a civil war within the GOP. He's getting Ben Shapiro to turn against Donald Trump. He's turning against Elon Musk. And I think that all of this infighting is very, very good for the country. When bad people essentially force their fans to draw lines and factionalize, this splinterization paves the way for normal people to form the majority and defeat these ghouls, either electorally or culturally or however way. But um, this is certainly a shit show. But even though what Kanye West unwittingly is doing is good for the country by factionalizing the GOP, his presence and visibility is dangerous because of the way he is so vile and explicitly anti-Semitic and who's now helping to normalize and popularize individuals like Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos who are effectively Nazis. So that's where we're at in the United States of America where we have rapper presidential candidates beefing with former reality television show star presidential candidates and also attacking the billionaire owner of Twitter. It's just, it feels like the synopsis to a parody movie about America that was produced in 2013. But this is real life now, and we're all living it. So either way, if this is a simulation or real, this is what we're experiencing, and it's batshit fucking insane, and I want off this ride. I want out of this timeline. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.